okay, okay. Part two of our series where I guide you through the process of how we create architecture, how we make buildings. So in the first episode, I guess, in the first part of the series, I talked about, you know, the initial contact with the client and um, initial kind of stages of how do we begin designing. And we left off by receiving first set of amendments from the client, basically what the client wants us to change. And since then, a week has passed and we have been working hard to make those changes. Not all of them were easy. I guess I'll immediately jump into, um, into actually showing the designs and what we came up with. And we'll talk about those while I'm showing them. Okay then, so we are still doing two versions and I'm going to start by showing you my version. And we will finish up with kind of working in parallel, both me and Olga working in parallel and producing two different variations of the, of the design um, in, in a week or so. So that means that after one more week, the client will need to choose which uh, design do they want us to pursue. So this is my version, version 2.0, I guess. Uh, and some things have been changed. And as you can see, as we're moving through the versions, uh, we keep adding detailing and we keep kind of adding more and more mm, dimensions, for the lack of a better word, to the design, right? So in this case, I'm starting to talk about uh, the materiality of things, you know, some sort of a, for the lack of a better word, <clears throat> brick material with something. Uh, something that might be metal. Right now, we're not married to any kind of material, but you know, uh, just just showing um, two different materials to the client will help him um, decide, you know, if, if if this is something that they want to pursue. So, from the first version, this is quite different, right? And I guess. It's, it's going to be much easier for me to show you the drawings, uh, not that, that, to show you the drawings of this design to talk about what has been changed, right? So the client um, wanted to have less floor area, right? But at the same time, keep the, <laughs> keep the size of the rooms. Yeah, typical. <laughs> typical client needs, huh? So I had to... Um, kind of compress everything and try to eliminate as many corridors as possible. This led me to thicken up this whole um, living room slash kitchen area. So now we do have um, how is it that uh, the, the the kitchen island right here, which is much nicer uh, compared to the previous version, and also um, we have. On the second floor, I guess, uh, we, we do have this kind of a large roof terrace that the client can use if they want to. If they don't, uh, it can be closed off. Other than that, everything, and the logic of it is still pretty similar. So one thing that was eliminated in this was that nice uh, little window through which you could view the, the tree. That's gone now. <laughs> that didn't, didn't work out. But I managed to push in another window right here. Can we zoom in? Yeah. Another window right here with some pillows as an additional nook where the client can sit down and read a book uh, calmly. And that, that gets the, 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 the morning light. And um, one thing that uh, you kept asking me in the comments was what's up with the thickness of the walls? And that is due to the fact that, like, the walls are pretty damn thick, right? Um, that has something to do with the building being quite up north. So it's in Lithuania. And Lithuania gets pretty cold uh, in winter. That's like minus 20 degrees is, uh, Celsius. Minus 20 degrees Celsius is normal. Um, and summers are pretty hot. Uh, this summer we had plus 35, 
usually it's around plus 30 degrees Celsius. So there's a large fluctuation in temperature. Um, and also, since uh, early 21, I, I think January of 21, we moved into a new regulation where every new, newly built residential building needs to follow A++ energy efficiency class, which means that basically the buildings need to be um, neutral in energy consumption, almost neutral in energy consumption. That's very hard to do, especially if you don't have like solar panels all over the place. And also in Lithuania, solar panels are not that effective. Um, they do help, but they're not that effective. So that is why the walls are so, so thick. You have like 250 millimeters of uh, concrete or, or blocks, doesn't matter, you know, of, of the retaining walls have like 25 centimeters to 150 millimeters of concrete, let's say. And then you add um, around 300 millimeters of uh, just uh, heat insulation, right? And then you're left with uh, five more centimeters, 50 millimeters for the cladding, the, um, the vapor insulation, the... If, if you're cladding the facade with wood, then you need an air gap and so on. So in total, you have 60 centimeters for walls. Really hard to do an elegant design when you have walls that are that thick. But enough about that. I, I just think that it's interesting to kind of hear about these, these kind of uh, problems, especially for people who are uh, designing buildings in, uh, near the south right? or, or near the equator. Uh, I should say. So that is the design, right? That is the 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 idea and how things are uh, have been changed. And we are um, at two hundred thirty three square meters for the overall building, with the density of the site reaching zero point two one. Right. So according to, to the regulation, the density of the site needs to be 0 0.17. We are at 0 0.21. The client will need to try and push that um, regulation a little bit further, right, to at least to 0 0.22, something like that. And that is doable. So we are we got to go ahead from the client that we can do that. Uh, and we are using it up. <laughs> With 0 0.17, uh, we couldn't do anything. Honestly, it would just be a box, right? And neither one of the sides wants that to happen. So this is the, the design, right? The logic is that you have two volumes, one blue one, one black one, and those two volumes are intersecting, right? And, and thus creating this kind of a... Um, I would say quite a, what's the word, monolithic? I guess monolithic effect, right? This kind of a union of, of two, or intersection, I might say, um, I should say, of two um, objects, right? And then you have a terrace with uh, some, some area where you can kind of put, put down the food and have a furnace or something like that. Um, right. So that is uh, my initial proposal, uh, or not initial anymore, proposal version two. Um, and then we have Olga's proposal, revised Olga's proposal uh, for the clients. So they wanted uh, something to be done. The, the biggest thing was that they wanted something to be done with this facade. So she has extended um, a roof slab right here, like so protect from the rain and also added the same um, architectural element as I have or we both decided to both add that architectural element in both of our designs um, as a support for the for, for the cantilever as well as the it's just a nice thing to have you know when, when you're cooking outside um, just quite convenient to have it that way and for the materiality it's much more um, how do I say, like, like an expensive watch, right? You have the black with the copper right here. 
And I have a feeling that the client will appreciate the copper much more than my blue, <laughs> blue metal. But we will see. <laughs> we will see. Other than that, the design hasn't changed much. Uh, I will open up her drawings. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, the entry sequence is the same. The garage is the same. So everything kind of, uh, kind of stayed in a similar, like, uh, qu quite similar. Um, the terrace is organized in the center of the site, together with that large tree right here. Right? So I, I think that this is a very private space and a very valuable space to to have. Honestly, I prefer. <laughs> I do prefer Olga's design to mine, and I hope that the clients uh, choose this as uh, something that they want to pursue. That's that. Uh, second floor. Uh, for the second floor, we have a much smaller space compared to mine. Uh, so the second floor is much, much uh, smaller and much more like compact in a way that uh, the, the hallway is very short, right? In my case, the hallway was much larger. Um, other than that, you have three bedrooms. Uh, you have the, the bathroom and you have the wardrobe with the washing machines in the wardrobe, which is quite convenient, I think, uh, as long as you can keep the vapors out. And I think with proper ventilation, you can. <clears throat> so that is the, let's say, the second iteration and as you can see that with every iteration we increase i already said this but i will repeat it you always increase the level of quality not quality um level of detail with every iteration and hopefully quality as well honestly um dimensions just for the client to kind of get that get a sense of what the hell is going on uh more dimensions and facades, right? I also did facades, but uh, Olga's are better, so I'm showing you Olga's facades, right? So we have facades here, here, and a small little section, just kind of uh, talking about the heights, the, how high the ceiling is, and then so on, right? So this is something that we have sent to the client um, to give us feedback and to tell us what uh, what needs to be further changed right so we already received uh, and we sent it through email so we've already received a reply and i will open it up um, and kind of read the reply to you or translate the reply to you and uh, that reply is basically a preparation for us to make amendments be, be, before our next actual meeting, uh, our actual conversation with the client. So uh, we're working in a, in a way where, um, is this cool, is this not cool, is uh, judged by the client through email, while overarching problems or overarching questions are usually negotiated or discussed in real life meetings be it actually meeting up or over zoom so let me just uh, translate you their email just a second hey so since this is confidential i can't show you the actual email because that would get me in trouble but i can also it's in lithuanian so what do you care but I can translate it uh, for you. And I will actually go through all of the, the whole conversation that we have had with the clients over the emails. So real quick, they started off by uh, thanking us for, for the, you know, the, the corrections. And they basically said that uh, Olga's version is something that they, they have already they have already received a similar proposal from a different client uh, because they worked with a different client before us, a uh, client, architect, different architect. They worked with a different architect before us and they are not sure about it uh, and they would like to discuss this further. Uh, as for my proposal, they had like 11 questions. Most of them are, or 11 requests, I guess. 
most of them are basically put this window right here be smaller and our answer to that is no <laughs> but we can make it diffused uh, what, what what's the like you know the grainy glass which you can't see through so we will offer that instead so that was one of them um also they asked for um more more places to hang their coats um what what else is there oh yeah and what's what's the measurement here for the car parking and we basically will just tell them right um oh yeah and the blue they hate the blue stuff eh, yeah you know you you sometimes try and miss <laughs> So instead of the blue one, uh, we will be using the copper. We, they also mentioned that uh, they will be using bricks as their facade cladding. Uh, so copper with bricks, well, not bricks as in not the orange ones, the, the black bricks also work. Uh, so copper with bricks will, will be nice, will work nicely. Um, besides that, Basically, they just want us to make adjustments uh, before our next meeting. So then uh, Olga has replied saying that um, her uh, variant, I don't have it opened, but uh, in her variant there... Um, wait, sorry. My bad. Oh, there we go. There we go. So um, uh, Olga has, has replied about the measurements of, of this uh, cantilever and the clients then uh, asked about the, um, if, if, if the structure of it is going to be fine, right? If, if it's going to hold up and it is. So um, because we have a, an engineer in our uh, group as well, who's, who's kind of consulting. At this stage, he's consulting us. I will talk about the engineering stage a little bit later once we actually start working with him. But for now, uh, this console right here is absolutely fine. And basically, um, there's a lot of back and forth here between Olga and the clients about um, changing different things, uh, different small things within the interior. But overall, the the proposal, like this proposal, seems to be um, they seem to like this proposal a little bit more, which is a shame because I prefer uh, I prefer Olga's. But uh, we, by the end of this uh, conversation, and this is like eight emails in total, right? Back and forth, um, we have changed small things, and it's on Olga's computer, so I can't show you. But it's mostly like the, it's the same thing, right? Uh, the the visual aspects of the building stays uh, the same it's only the interior spaces that are kind of pushed around a bit to um, facilitate the needs of the client um, and we have decided to meet up um, over zoom actually in five days so before that meeting uh, the clients will think about what kind of additional changes do they want to be made and we will uh, kind of sit down and discuss um, are we happy with the two oops are we happy with the two proposals that we have put forward and if we're not what kind of changes should we propose to the clients uh, during our next meeting so that is uh, scheduled in five days, and I will continue the video um, after that. So see you then. So there we go. It's been five days. The meeting went well. The client chose this particular uh, version, which is a shame. I kind of liked the other one more, but it is what it is. You know, it's, it's the client's call. And we had quite a few things to change uh, with this design. Well, when I say quite a few, I mean in terms of amount of, of things to change. All of those things were little, but there was a lot of them, right? 
and I will kind of go through it real quick without actually going into too many details because that is probably going to be boring and also this camera is way too big let me just do this instead right so first I'll talk about the changes that we've made uh, for this version uh, by showing you the 3d model uh, let me just hide the tree so they're not in the way and just kind of show it to you so in terms of the exterior not much has changed it's only the material as well as the uh, the supporting column right here right these are the main two changes uh, that were made um, there were some kind of composition changes in this facade as well but uh, it's it, it, those are minor right the main ones are these two um and basically i do think that it's for the best right this facade right now looks a little bit better uh, from what it was before uh, and the front facade definitely looks much better from what it was before <laughs> and the material right um, we're not doing we're not doing blue we're not doing blue color we're doing copper which is of course yeah I, I, I knew it I knew that th this is gonna happen but um, I think it's fine I, I think I think it looks better than the blue one so might as well use it um, we do have, so th those are the only things that changed for the exterior. We do have some uh, pictures uh, as well that we showed to the client uh, just to try and um, sell the idea. And right now my camera is completely in the way of the picture, so I'm going to hide it. Um, and I encourage you to do so as well, right? When you're, don't be afraid of doing low resolution renders just to sell an idea to a client. In, uh, in this case, you know, the materiality of the facade um, and just do like quick renders rather than just trying to sell it through drawings and through um, 3D models, right? So these are the uh, visuals that we show the client. I personally like this one, right? With, uh, with actually without seeing it in 3D, with uh, oh, sorry, with only seeing it in 3D, you couldn't really kind of um, you couldn't sell this to the client. I, I think the client would say that this is too heavy. But just looking at it like so, I think it's it it paints a better picture. So we have that that facade. This is a pretty facade. Also this, yeah. So as you can see, the renders are kind of starting to move a little bit forward. And the next step is going to be to make, oh, I should turn on the camera again. <laughs> the next step is indeed going to be making nice renders, right? Making this thing presentable because at this stage, not much will change about the exterior most of the stuff that are going to be changed are going to be in the interior space not in the exterior right so we're going to be uh doing renders next and but that's going to be in part three of our series for part two before we finish up um i will show you the drawings that we showed the clients um and that we used to negotiate different design uh, decisions with the clients right so the facades again trying just to kind of sell the idea of uh, dual materiality within the facades more facades um, measurements of, of the building I guess I should in, in the plans I should show you the furniture plans more and talk about what changes we had right so the main change was uh, in the hallway area right here we had the uh, the sauna as well as the bathroom were kind of shuffled around a little bit and um, how is it called um, where where your um, like uh, different aggregates for 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 heating for ventilation and so on are i forgot the name sorry <laughs> but uh, basically that kind of service room uh, has been enlarged Quite heavily right um, besides that uh, not not much has changed especially in the 
um, in the kitchen slash living room area, right? So that that was that. Um, in terms of statistics, I'm not sure if I already told you this. I have a deja vu. <laughs> so for some reason, I have a deja vu that I already have told you the statistics. But today marks the day six. Oh, sorry, day six. Today is September 6th, and it marks day 30. So one month since we started doing this project and since we initiated contact with the, um, with the client. And this is, what, this is the material that we have after the first month, right? With, with um, talking with the client. Speaking of talking, um, in that month we had, I'm just opening up the emails real quick. We, we had uh, 26 emails in total, back and forth, uh, with the clients. And also we had uh, two meetings, right? So this, this is right after meeting number two. And this kind of marks the, the end of the, well, maybe the render making will, or visualization making will mark the end of the design development phase and we will move into the next phase. But that is going to be in video number three or part three of our series. And you'll need to wait for that just a tiny bit. Okay, but for now we're, we're done and good process, good progress, I should say. Okay, see ya.